Last Friday's employment report from the Bureau of Labor Statistics was labeled shockingly good by MSNBC and as a blowout report by Reuters. According to the BLS, the U.S. economy added 254,000 jobs in September, seasonally adjusted. That's the biggest increase in six months. Defenders of the status quo seized upon this latest number as evidence that the U.S. economy is in great shape. Well, the problem with this view is that nearly everywhere else we look, we find data that points to either stagnation or to a truly problematic economic situation. We could point to many indicators outside the employment report, of course. There is the Fed's own Beige Book, which recently reported that most of the Fed's 12 districts were either stagnating or getting worse. The Richmond Fed's Manufacturing Activity Survey is in recession territory. The Conference Board's Leading Economic Indicators Index posted its sixth consecutive monthly decline in August, triggering a recession signal. Meanwhile, the ISM September Manufacturing Report says that the manufacturing sector is contracting. But let's look specifically at Friday's jobs report and beyond the establishment survey's jobs numbers reported in the headlines. That big 254,000 jobs gain is just one small part of the overall employment report, and it only shows us total jobs, whether full-time or not. What that payroll number misses is that most of these jobs are part-time jobs and that total employment growth is being pushed up by government job growth while the private sector stagnates. For example, according to the Household Survey, which measures employed people rather than just jobs, over the past year, part-time employment rose by 813,000. Full-time employment fell by 485,000. The number of workers with more than one job is at the highest ever, as is the number of workers whose primary and secondary jobs are both part-time. And then there is last month's very large surge in government employment. While we did see growth in employed persons for September, we also saw that government employment rose to the highest level ever. September's month-over-month -month increase was 785,000, which was the largest increase ever recorded outside the 2020 pandemic. This is especially noteworthy when we find that private sector employment increased by a paltry 133,000, a small fraction of the government job number. Over the past year, private sector employment has fallen, according to the Household Survey. Private employment fell 463,000 from September 2023 to September this year. Government jobs, on the other hand, rose 598,000 during the same period. Average weekly hours continue to fall and are now at the lowest point we've seen since 2009, excluding the pandemic. So total hours are falling and a record number of workers are holding part-time jobs. So when we see job gains in recent months, many of those are government jobs, and in some cases, all of the net job growth is government jobs. The private sector growth we do see, by the way, is in hospitality and healthcare, two sectors generally regarded as low-wage sectors. So if we want to see any real growth in employment in the September report, we have to look to government jobs and workers holding down two jobs as total hours decline. It's also a fairly safe bet that the federal government is doing its best to present the rosiest picture it can, and even these best-case scenario numbers show private sector stagnation, and this in the face of the biggest annual federal deficits ever run in peacetime. The economy is facing some serious headwinds out there, and this very weak jobs report is not exactly showing us otherwise. <laughs>